As the remnants of Green's incursion toward the Dunker Church fell back in retreat due to heavy fire coming from the West Woods, the New Yorkers of Irwin's Brigade was ordered to cover the retreat. Of this detachment included the 20th New York, a regiment of Germans who shouted Bahen Frey and charged the church to capture it for the final time during the battle, taking horrendous casualties in the process. The 20th New York Infantry, who are also known as the Turner Rifles, was a volunteer infantry regiment who was mustered and formed in Klein Deutschen, a German immigrant neighborhood on the lower east side of Manhattan in New York City with some companies who formed in upstate New York and neighboring New Jersey. The regiment would be mustered into federal service on May 6, 1861 for two years. They would leave New York with much fanfare, which included a parade in their neighborhood to their transport ship where they would receive an American flag, a German revolutionary flag, and a guide flag with the slogan Bahen Frey, which was clear the way in German. The majority of the recruits came from the various German-American Turner societies where they would get the nickname from. Turners, as the members of the societies would be called, were part of the gymnastic clubs who were not just athletic but also political and militaristic. Many Turners would fight in the revolutions of 1848 who favored German unification but were defeated. After being suppressed, many Turners would leave Germany with many immigrating to the United States and these migrants would be called the 48ers. Keeping with their roots, they would become politically involved in America and would support the Union. After the Civil War broke out, many would enlist to fight for the North. The Turners would first be shipped to Virginia to defend the capital before joining in a joint Army-Navy expedition to capture Confederate Forts Hatteras and Clark, with the regiment's own Colonel Max Weber accepting the surrender of the two forts. Then the regiment would be transported to the Sixth Corps to join in the Peninsula Campaign. They would be brigaded with the 7th Maine, 33rd, 49th, and 77th New York regiments under the command of John W. Davidson. They would not see combat until the Battle of White Oak Swamp where a surprise Confederate artillery bombardment routed the regiment which resulted in the resignation of nine officers and the promotion of their new colonel named Ernest von Vegesack. The regiment along with its brigade would be sent back to Washington until the Maryland Campaign. During the Maryland Campaign, the regiment would be led by Colonel Ernst von Vegesack, who was attached to Irwin's 3rd Brigade of Smith's 2nd Division and Franklin's 6th Corps. The entire brigade, except for Irwin's brigade, would be held in reserve. Irwin would be ordered to cross the Antietam around 10 a.m. and would reach the East Woods at noon just in time to protect Green's withdrawal from the Dunker Church. Colonel Irwin would send the 20th, 33rd, and 77th New York regiments toward the church while the 7th May would attack Piper's farm. The New Yorkers would be caught with concentrated fire as they approached the church where they would hold on to with the 20th taking the brunt of the fire. Their flag bearers insisted on holding the national flag conspicuously high which created great targets for rebel sharpshooters. But their efforts would be in vain since they would not be supported by anybody else and would be forced to retreat, losing the church once again. Though they achieved to counteract their previous debacle at the Battle of White Oak Swamp with their performance near the church, of roughly 800 men who went into battle for the 20th, roughly 150 men would be dead, wounded, or captured. Most of the recruits consisted of Germans. Many were ingrained with the German tradition of marksmanship and wanted to be equipped with a rifle. To their dismay, they were first issued smoothbore muskets, but these guns would be replaced with rifles in 1862. The rifles they would receive is the M1842 Mississippi Rifle. This 58 caliber rifle would fit the Germans role as marksmen extremely well even though they would fight as regular infantry. Along with their sword bayonet, they could kill confederates up close or far away. Unlike the normal uniform most regiments would be forced to wear, the 20th New York was lucky to have a distinct look to their appearance. Their uniform consisted of a dark blue frock coat and trousers with green trimmings down the edges, cuffs, and collars to have a resemblance to the German Jaegers who wore green. 
The NCO stripes will also be green unlike the standard blue. For their cover, they will wear either a black brim hat or the standard issue hardy hat. Many soldiers would also wear their knapsacks, haversacks, and or bedrolls into battle. The 20th would carry two flags into battle, their national colors and their regimental colors. The regimental colors would consist of New York coat of arms on a yellow background with a ribbon above with the unit's name. The opposite side would show the American coat of arms, which is an eagle grasping arrows and all the branch in each of its talons. Above the eagle will be all the stars that represented the states in the Union. Underneath the eagle would be the same ribbon with the unit's name. In War of Rights, you can find the 20th New York attacking Piper's Farm along with the 7th Maine. Now what would you do? Would you clear the way for the Union or send these Germans scrambling? 